Lights, Camera, Love is a well-thought-out romance set in the KwaZulu-Natal Midlands. It has all the trappings of a typical girl-meets-boy story, yet with the intrigue and allure of ancient rituals and past tragedies that bind our two protagonists together. We've invited author of Lights, Camera, Love to chat about her first novel, Bronwyn Deshardine. Congratulations, Thank welcome, you. and thanks so much for thanks joining for us. Me. Now, you're part of the Nolly book uh, family mm. but how did you get into writing um, I've been writing since I was very young but um, had put off the dream because I'd had children was working it's the same story for most women I think mm. and um, I had a friend who had written for Nolly books and said they're asking for a synopsis and I submitted one and they liked it and they wanted more and it's essentially I'd worked. Yeah. <laughs> but how long in the making was it? Was it a thought that you had just put on the back burner and thought one day when I can sit on my hammock on a beach somewhere <laughs> uninterrupted by the family, I'm going to start writing? How did you know that was my dream? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, it was. Uh, but I'd not thought about it from a South African point of view because I grew up reading romances that were set in a European context. Mm. So this was very different and it just it sparked so much imagination. Yeah. It was a lovely idea. But which came first between the Oscar winning South African born director Jacob Kize and mm. the very ambitious receptionist who's also a hero, uh, Tuling Ngobo? Which, which one comes first for you? They actually both came at the same time and it's based on personal experience in the sense that I was working at a, as a receptionist in a hotel in, uh, in Santon and in the early 1990s. And um, I was sitting thinking, well, I've got to write a romance. How am I going to get your average woman to meet this amazing man? Mm -hmm. And I remembered that at the time, Anand Singh was staying at the hotel filming Serafina. He's hot. And he's lovely. <laughs> and I thought, there you go. There's my scenario. So it wasn't difficult. But and you didn't necessarily have a crush on your No, no, subject. no, no, no. Yeah. Um, everyone's been in love. I don't think there's anyone out there who hasn't experienced love. And, and that's what this is, you know, there's, there's got to be that magnetism between them. So. Yeah, but not only books, I mean, they, they, they encourage uh, writing and reading, especially mm. for leisure, mm. um, and, and, and provide the safety net, if you will, to support you. Mm. It, it is important for a first-time writer because it can yes. be nerve-wracking and you could have a writer's block and that kind of thing. Definitely, but you're encouraged to write what you know. And um, Nolly Books was there for us the whole way. I mean, I... You know, I'd submit and they'd say, yes, this is working or this isn't, try going this way or that way. Because when you're writing, you can't be objective about what you're writing. You're very involved. And it takes someone outside who's reading it to be able to say, you know what, you've, you know, you've hit the nail on the head here, yeah, but there maybe you're going a little bit too difficult. I mean, I, the first time I wrote about Jake, I was a, he was a little bit more aggressive than he is in, this, in the book now. So, mm -hmm. um, and that had to change yeah. to make it better. But it, it's a beautiful story, especially because it incorporates the landscape as well. I mean, you can literally feel and, mm -hmm. and smell <laughs> what, uh, what, what's going on. Even the anxiety and, and the, uh, what is this, the, the resistance in terms between lovers or who makes mm -hmm. the first move, etc. How much time do you spend on the emotion of each character? I see it. I mean, everyone has their own way of writing. There's some people like Stephen King who just writes and he doesn't have an idea of where he's going. He lets his characters lead him. Mm. Um, and the other people who have a whole thing plotted out, and that's how I write. Um, and, uh, you know, it, you just follow their... You, once you know your character, you have to know your character. You have to know exactly what she'd buy if she went shopping, what she drives, mm. in order for it to become a three-dimensional, realistic character that the reader would buy into. Um, otherwise it becomes very flat and the key is dialogue. You're showing a story as opposed to telling a story. Yeah. So you involve senses. And, and was it d deliberate as well that the storm becomes the metaphor? I mean yes. the book starts with the storm That's and right. ends with the storm yes. and it's very frightening yes. until you find out that well, I'm not going to give it away. <laughs> but that was deliberate for yes, you. Yes, it was, definitely. Well, um, storms are, as, as you say, a metaphor in life. I mean, everybody has their storms. It's whether it's uh, something in the relationship that the in-laws don't like you or that circumstances pull you apart. And how, is your love strong enough to get through that? And, and normally the moments of change come at a time when you least expect it. And they like storms. Things just mm. blow in out of nowhere. And before you know it, you're caught in the middle of something. Yeah. And you, your emotions carry you away. And, and it's deliberate as well that the woman comes out as the hero in all of That's it. Right. Even in her awkwardness around this hot, hot, hot guy that she clearly can't resist. <laughs> yes. um, but it also speaks about preserving yourself yes. and your <clears throat> culture. Mm -hmm. and being authentically mm -hmm. true to yourself. Absolutely. I think it's vital. I think, um, you know, I'm, I'm a teacher as well, and 
I do encourage my learners and people, you know, readers, they need to maintain their identity. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it, this is what's unique about Nolly Books because it's providing a South African love story, yeah. a set in South Africa without a European context because everything I grew up reading was always about either European or American. And um, while those are lovely books to read, I wanted something I could identify with. And yeah. this is what that's about. And there's more to it than just a, a really delightful read mm. because you also encourage book clubs that's for right. ladies to sit around and talk about the characters. There's yes. even um, a dictionary, right. you know, of words that, that, that one can yes. explore if you yes. or brush up on. Yes, that's to encourage reading and to get a love for words again because it's, um, I always tell, you know, people reading and people wanting to write, you're painting images with words mm. and hence you've got to appeal to all the senses and you should at least have two or three senses per page. You know, yeah. there is a kind of method to it, but obviously everyone has their own unique voice. Yeah. And what's your favorite part of the book? Um, the storm. <laughs> the <laughs> right at the end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm not going to give anything No, no, no. Well, I know. <laughs> thanks, thanks so much, Bronwyn. It's and again, congratulations. Thank you really so appreciate it. And we hope uh, to see you on the bestseller oh, list that would be lovely. very thanks. soon. Thank, <laughs> Thank you so you. much. We're speaking to the author of Lights, Camera, Love on the importance of reading and writing for leisure and how this serves as part of social transformation and expression. Bronwyn Desjardins' book, Lights, Camera, Love, retails for 49.99 Rand. And you can go to www.nollybooks.co.za for more information. That's www.nollybooks.co.za if uh, you are an aspirant uh, writer or you, you would just like to be part of the book club.